source. Okay. And we should be live. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what second. Yes, perfect. Okay. Welcome everybody. Today we today we have uh, Shokilla from Jersey. We'll talk about freelancing, Twitter, so money, social media. This is the perfect mix. He went from zero to five thousand uh, um, uh, dollars, uh, and this is a great story because I, I, I invited him because uh, I want to hear the story and also to share some tips uh, with you. Especially, I think if you are just getting started with social media and you want to use social media to basically get money out of debt, something that I I thought impossible a couple of years ago. I would have laughed at, at, at this title. So. Um, Welcome, Shaquille. How are you? I'm fine, man. And 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 yeah, I, I agree. I, I thought it was I would have thought it was impossible too. This is why I didn't pursue it for a long time, because I yeah. just never thought it was a realistic possibility. And to see so much success so quickly, I understand that anybody could have done this. Yeah. And for example, uh, uh, sometimes you think that um, if, uh, for example, now I feel a little bit dumb because I said maybe I could have started uh, 10 years ago. But uh, I also say, I always say that if you say something like that, at least you are on the right path. So, yeah, so now yeah. we are in the right, path. So <laughs> in the right place. I th at least this is, this is what we think. So, yeah. yeah. So, Shaquille, uh, we have not interacted that much on Twitter. I don't know why, to be honest. We can blame the time zone because... Uh, Usually go to yeah. sleep very early, so probably this is one of the reasons. But uh, yeah, so can you can you tell me a little bit about you, and then we start. And of course, uh, feel free to leave a, leave a question. We are here for you, basically, and also because I don't want to edit. These are the two main reasons of this <laughs> of these uh, streams. So yeah, Shaquille, we can get started. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Shaquille Hansford. I am a technical writer and a full stack developer uh, focused on like the uh, MERN stack. So Mongo, Express, React, Node. Um, although React kind of is being replaced by Next.js, right? Like who, who's, who's doing just React anymore? But yeah. um, so that's what I do. I My specialty is writing documentation. I'm writing documentation right now. My biggest client is uh, a startup in New York called Take Shape, and I'm documenting their uh, API. So that's kind of wh who I am now. But I mean, I would love to tell you where I come from and, and what I started at, because uh, I feel like a lot of people engage with my personal story, right? And I know you wanted to hear that. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> so really like last year this time, I didn't even know JavaScript. Um, oh, hey, hey, hey Miro. <laughs> Yeah, last year this time, I, I didn't even know JavaScript. Like, I had played with it a long time ago. When I was younger, I'm 29 now, and when I first went to college, I started as an English major, and then I switched over to computer science, and I was teaching myself C++ and all these things, and I taught myself a little JavaScript, but that was 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, Node was a very new thing. I remember people saying, oh, this Node thing, it'll never work in real life. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> like genuinely, that's what people were talking mm -hmm. about. And I, I remember thinking, like, maybe I'll try out this Node thing. Maybe it's good for video games or something. Yeah. And uh, so I dropped, I, 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 because my living situation changed, I dropped out of college and I had to start working. And I worked at retail for years and years. And I freelanced as a designer. As, a, as an artist and doing videography and pandemic hit, I got sick. I lost all my opportunities. I lost my job. And so I was left here sitting here wondering, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go back to being a cashier in the middle of the pandemic? And so I decided, let me take this opportunity and try this web dev stuff. And it worked out. I mean, it, it, you would not believe how much opportunity there is out here. And that's a big part of why, you know, I'm here trying to talk to Francesco and his audience today to kind of spread the word. Like, you guys, there's so much success out here and you can have that success freelancing. 
I think this is uh, one of the most uh, inspirational stories that I've ever heard, and I've interviewed more than 100 people. <laughs> Just for example, I didn't even know exactly. I thought that you were already a uh, developer or you already seen something, but uh, I think that the pandemic really changed our lives. Because, for example, I started uh, maybe I had a, a decent timing because I started using social in January, and on March I started to work from home. But so already a full stack, already a full stack developer. So we are kind of different stories. I really admire you. I like you. I would like to be yeah, really your your best friend now, Shagil, after this one. So yeah, please go on because I think that some people they want to know exactly what you have done because I think I suppose that they want to do <laughs> exactly the same. So your story is really inspirational for for all of us. I'm joking, of course. If you have any <laughs> questions, hey Merkin. I love this part of Shaggy's story. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Merkim. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Merkim, maybe. I yeah, I love that guy. He's always uh, interacting with me and he's really cool. I hope yeah. I'm following him. I should follow him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, so what have I, What did I do to, to get here? Well, to be honest, a lot of it was just cold, hard dedication. And it's like, I hate to kind of pump myself up, but when I was like, looking at the opportunities out there to be a full stack developer, I didn't think there was any possibility of freelancing at all. I thought I just need to go get a job. And so I saw the advice, which was to build portfolio projects to bring to interviews. And I said, if everyone's building to do apps, I'm going to build something insane. And so I sat down and I'd set myself this goal to build an app called Buddy Viewer, which is an app that allows multiple people to join a room and watch a video from YouTube, Vimeo, uh, Tumblr, Twi uh, Twitter, Twitch, all in one room. And if I pause it, it pauses for everyone. If I fast forward, it fast forwards for everyone. And there's a chat. And uh, yeah, I knew going into that, that that was going to be a nightmare to work with and build because I did not know JavaScript. But I said, I'm going to build it anyway. And I just fought my way through it every day eight hours a day coding. I created my own list of like, this is what I have to do today. It was like a ticketing system. And I took those down and I just tackled those every day. And I learned every day and I just fought my way through it. And the reason that that is so important for me building up this freelance success was when I was interacting with people on Twitter and they saw my portfolio link, Rocco Sangelino is, uh, for example, a really successful developer. He saw my link, uh, Eden Benatar, uh, also another really successful, he's a freelancer. He saw he saw my stuff. Multiple people saw my code. They saw that I had a backend with Node.js and Express. I was using Mongoose. I was using Socket.io. I was using Redis as a cache. And they were like, oh, this guy knows how to code. And so when they're messaging me, they're like, oh, you know, you know how to code. And so they're connecting me to people they know because they have jobs. They have uh, a connection and a network. And so that's what I really want to tell people is, the first thing I did was dedicate myself to actually making good projects and writing real applications that are impressive to people. And that was more valuable than any amount of growth hacking, any amount of crap you can do, literally being like, I can actually code, changed everything. Yeah, I'd really, uh, I'd literally, literally listen to for hours to this, uh, in, to go into the details. Uh, so maybe <laughs> we will make an, uh, another call because I have so, so many uh, things to talk about. And uh, I think that from now, so, since now, I'll um, I start using you an example where people just just asks for which is the best tutorial, which is the best series of tutorials, how many tutorials I have to follow. So instead, that you have taken action. You started to build something. You, you maybe you, you didn't even know what, what was going on because when you start mixing JavaScript, uh, streaming, and videos, uh, <laughs> we know that that's kind of, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But I, I seen that. But yeah, basically you you got your your hands dirty. Yeah, usually we say it like that. So you you had like a practical experience. Sometimes we lack about that maybe we think about yeah which one is the best the perfect uh, tutorial tutorials are there because someone is great at making tutorials Travis and Eden, other people are really uh, wholesome and, not, and nothing against them but uh, if you just watch tutorials you'll never take action if you just watch 
uh, box matches you will never be a champion <laughs> so basically <laughs> so yeah. yeah so i like i like this i like this yeah uh, and i and i want to say to people like there's kind of two caveats to that and i always try to tell people just the plain truth one is like i said i had gone for to college for computer science de a decade earlier so some basic concepts were already there for me. Like I already understood, I, I learned with C++, I didn't learn with high level languages. So I know what a pointer is. Okay. <clears throat> so the kind of questions I was Googling was stuff like, does JavaScript pass values to functions by reference or by value? These are not questions that a complete beginner would ever Google because they don't know what that even means. But that was something that was concerning me. So I want to be clear that I did have some level of experience. Uh, I, and I had been coding games on and off throughout the year. So I had some level of like, I know, I kind of know what I'm doing. So I wasn't as scared and intimidated. So please give yourself time and please give you like, that took me forever. I quit coding once a day, every day for a whole summer when I first was learning, like first was learning because it was so hard that I thought I'm not smart enough. Oh, hey, Ken. Oh, hey there. <laughs> so it's like, you have to give yourself time. Uh, but yeah, on the other hand, on the other hand, you have to build something. So find some, an idea that's exciting to you and challenge yourself to build it. And I didn't know, oh, hey, that's Kyle. That's my boy, Kyle. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. He'll yeah, be like, here one day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should be. He's, dude, he's, he, he's a badass at everything. Like, I haven't seen anything he's not good at. Like, holy crap. Um, so, like, but I just want to say, like, if you challenge yourself to build something, it like just stick to it and say, I'm just gonna build this, even though it's very hard. I had no idea the first thing about what I was trying to build when I went to went to went to build my first app. But like, I mean, for example, I didn't know that the WebSockets existed. I just used Ajax calls. I used Ajax and I just ran a loop and every one second i did a call to the server and, and and updated my app that was how i did it so it was but i was like and then i learned about socket io and i was like i just spent a month building socket io <laughs> so yeah, at least, just, yeah at least you're not uh, had this uh, idea to to create socket io <laughs> to <just> create some. <laughs> right yeah i just i created socket io realized i had done that and then i i watched the fireship io video and he talked about socket io and i was like did i just build this so i had to delete it and, and, <laughs> and then bring in socket io and i was like wow this is a lot better <laughs> so it's like but that's gonna happen you gotta be willing you gotta be willing to just suck it up and take it and and yeah. go like i didn't stop and say i don't know how to do this because i would have yeah. never found socket io myself i just built it just that's your attitude you have to have. I'm just going to build this stuff. Yeah, just let, let me say something very fast. But I think that in your case, you could think that you have lost some time. I don't know, maybe. But if you try to build something on your own without knowing that something else better exists, once you, you understand that that thing exists, you understand all the benefits, all the problems that they that great team has solved for you. So it's like uh, the moment, like, yeah, I would like uh, yeah, to have seen your face in that moment. <laughs> maybe you see, okay, <laughs> they solved this. <laughs> yeah, I, it was really funny. But at the same time, I really wanted a job now. So I was like, we don't have time to mourn. Just delete all of this code and just do yeah. socket IO. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Perfect. I, I love this. I love this. So, yeah, Shakira. So, yeah, let's get in, in a, a bit into the topic. So, because I think there are maybe some people, of course, if you are joining now, that uh, maybe would like to talk about the topic, the title of this uh, stream. So, how can we use uh, Twitter or maybe also other social media to actually find a job? So, for me now, it's a, a normal question. I also quit my job six months ago, so I can understand something. But before that, for me, it was like a, a joke, the, this kind of question. So how can we instead say that this is actually possible and this is, we are not just laughing and saying jokes? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so how can you get a job on Twitter? Well, okay. First, I want you to understand that 
people literally are getting jobs on Twitter. You can go on Twitter right now and see a lot of people who have confirm. only <clears throat> 500 followers, maybe a thousand followers, and they're getting contacted by companies. I just interviewed a guy who was looking for a job as a developer. Hello, Mohammed. And, <laughs> and because he was tweeting about tech, someone contacted him and said, hey, do you want to be a technical writer for us? He had never thought about that. And so the reason Twitter works is that you are basically in this ecosystem of a bunch of people who are looking for someone with technical skills and the drive to learn and put in the effort and they can't find anybody. So they're going around Twitter and they're talking to people and when they interact with you and they say, oh, I like this guy, they say, hey, I got a position at my company or hey, I need someone to handle this or that for me. I want to give like an example of like something that happened in history that was like this. I remember when I was younger, I read a story about a guy who is like a high level investor and like a, a day trader. And the way he first got his job in on Wall Street was he just walked up and down the street on Wall Street in the 70s and 80s. And he would whenever he saw someone calling a cab, he would jump in the cab with them and he would just be like, Oh, yeah, I love day trade. He taught himself all these financial concepts, but he would say, yeah, I love this stuff. And he would chat with these people. And eventually one of these guys go, are you working for anybody? And he goes, no. And they hired him. Twitter is like that. Like, you can't do that nowadays. There's no opportunity there to do that nowadays. These people are jumping in limos and they're jumping in private jets. But Twitter is like erases the limos. It erases the private jets by jumping on a Twitter thread, by commenting on someone's tweet. You're jumping in the cab with them. And you're talking with them like, hey, what's up, this or that. And they're like, do you have a job? Are you working with anyone? Because we need someone. So that's how Twitter is working and how Twitter is is going to get you job opportunities and freelance opportunities. Yeah, and I can confirm this because uh, also I worked with, for example, with Simon Heiberg at Feed Hive. And now I've also started to <laughs> work as a developer advocate. There's been a couple of months. Uh, plus I've had a... Uh, and a, a, lo a lot of offers, maybe also now because I have a uh, decent number of followers. It, and it's not all just about that. I keep repeating that it's not about, you don't need to reach 100 of thousands to, to get the, the, the first opportunity. As you say, that they could, yeah, if you, if you post something good, if you interact with people, <laughs> Yeah, hey, my, Mikey. I don't know if I pronounce that too well. <laughs> Micah. <laughs> Micah. It's Micah. Micah, okay. Um, yeah, so what do you think? I, I have a question. Of course, if you have questions, just drop them. What do you think uh, that people are doing wrong? So, for example, uh, there, we are not saying names, if you want. To, but uh, what is there something that people you see with your eyes that you have seen that maybe they should not do? Because we always talk about what you should do, of course. But, for example, is there something to say, this, this will not help you. This can really be bad. Of course, we are talking about... Uh, getting a job as a freelancer if you want to do something <coughs> random but in that case you can't complain of course if nobody offers something to you yeah uh, exactly. uh also kyle, <laughs> also kyle, kyle wants to do that uh tell him what he's doing wrong uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna target kyle specifically but uh i so two things that people do wrong that i see a lot is one they tweet into the void. This is something that's mentioned a lot where they will write interesting content or interesting tweets, but the tweets are not going to anybody and no one's seeing it. So no one can interact with it. Um, the way to remedy that is before you start tweeting all this stuff, interact with people, interact with Francesco. I promise you, if you like every tweet Francesco puts out and you put a meaningful comment, don't just say, cool, put something meaningful. He's going to answer you. And when he answers you, the way Twitter works is I'm following Francesco. So now I see a tweet from him. He's like, thanks, man. Right. And I see the tweet he replied to. And it's you saying something. So now I like your tweet. So now I like the tweet. And people who follow me see that Shaquille Hansford liked the tweet. This is how you get involved in the algorithm. You have to engage with people. You have to interact with bigger accounts. And because Francesco likes you, uh, eventually and he's interacting with you when you tweet something cool it pops up on his feed and he might be like oh this guy has like 200 followers he's tweeting good stuff i like him i'm going to like his comment and i'm going to reply to it because i want him to succeed now you're getting in front of all of francesco's followers jack forge 
Danny Thompson, so many different people who will then like your tweet, especially if Francesco retweets it or something, and the algorithm can start getting to work. But if you're just tweeting without interacting with people, it's not gonna work. You have to, whenever I'm like ready to start tweeting and promoting something, I spend a week beforehand interacting with all the biggest accounts I can find. Absolutely. And sometimes I want to also point out that it's not just about the content. You can make a, a super good article, but if you have done the, per, the best article in the world, but you have not interaction, you have not like the something to get started, some, it's super, super hard that someone goes randomly on posts. So maybe it, it happens maybe after a while, maybe when uh, Google starts indexing them. But uh, it's normal, I think. So I think it's a, it's a mix, of course. Good quality content always uh, will show up. You can also use this in the future. But it's not only about that. Uh, yeah. If you just play a guitar in your room, nobody sees that. If you right. have the best in the world, uh, it's super hard to get not noticed. So it's a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. Francesco is so awesome. Some comp random compliments that help with getting noticed. <laughs> I, I try, Mohammed. It's hard because uh, I'm starting to lose track, to lose track of my notifications. Sorry. I think it's worse. I replied to one of my tweets and it, I literally got si six followers. Yeah, it's great. great. Just off a reply. Yeah. But it, <clears> and, and like the other thing that people do wrong is a lot of people try to, you, to uh, at a bunch of people include a bunch of people's uh, Twitter handles in a tweet just to get a bunch of engagement. Like they'll be like at Francesco, at Shaquille Hansford, at Danny Thompson, at all these people. And that doesn't work because these people are not gonna like the tweet because they're gonna see the tweet and say, why am, I, why am I on this? And they're just gonna move on and it'll just make them not like you. And I feel like that attitude of trying to game the system by including a bunch of ats and, and Twitter handles comes from a place of thinking that you can't succeed in a more honest and normal way. And that's not true. You can succeed, but you can't succeed being dishonest and being crappy because Twitter, as it stands now, you can only grow by actually being liked by other people. <laughs> that's the way it is. It rewards being a good, likable person. Yeah. Uh when this happens, usually I always say thank, thank you, because from my point of view, uh, it's good. But uh, maybe it's not the best strategy from your point of view. Usually I, I don't say this. There are people who just say, don't tag me. I prefer just to leave people to do until they don't hurt anybody else. Uh, for me, it's better than just attacking someone, of course. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that this is the best strategy. I don't usually don't say this when this happened, but uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's not the best. Um, maybe we have a question. What's the key of client's attraction through Twitter? Basically, the, the topic of this. Uh, so now we have talked about what we're doing wrong. So maybe at least we can talk 10 minutes about what maybe, what's the key? What's the key, Shaquille? So the key is that the clients that you're going to be getting through Twitter are not going to be just random person who owns a store who needs a website or random person who is doing anything, random entrepreneur. It's going to be other technical people who need your skill set. They're on Twitter. And if they see you tweeting things that make sense, they see you engaging with the community and they see that you know your stuff, they're going to DM you at some point and be like, hey, I have some work to get done. Are you willing to work with me? Uh, I'll subcontract this out to you. Twitter is not necessarily the source for direct clients, but it's always the source for client sources. And client sources are much more important because if you can secure sources of clients, then every month or so, you'll always have someone who is DMing you and saying, oh, this person just messaged me. I just checked my email, uh, an email account that I haven't checked in a while, and someone recommended me to some guy and he just messaged, he emailed me and he's like, oh, hey, I need you this. And I was like, man, Good thing I checked this email, but it's like, that's what, that's how it works is I never went out, to, reached out to this person. I never did anything, but because he knows someone who's technical and that person knows that I tweet about freelancing and that I do freelancing, that connection and that link was made. So that's the key to being clients being attracted to you through Twitter is that actually it's someone connected to the client that's going to, to get attracted to you on your Twitter account. Perfect. 
It's great. It's great. Thank you. Let's see. Mike, too amazing. Yeah, I am a little bit of imposter syndrome now because Mike is so good at podcasts. Dude, so let's, Mike let, is amazing. Let's try, let, 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 yeah, let's try to. Yeah, just let me put like that. Okay. <laughs> Mike, Mike, please don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, ah, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, this is the best place to make your questions, not maybe randomly on DMs. Of course, I'm not talking about the people in the chat. What are your dm best practices for your business growth oh okay i'm gonna tell you the the secrets here's the secret dm everybody who looks cool dm them first check out their stuff check out their website check out their tweets whatever they're doing dm them a specific compliment about their thing and legitimately say something nice and thank them for their content and then leave them alone that's it guess what a month or a week or a couple months from now, you're going to come back to them and you're going to want advice or you're going to need some help. And the first DM you send them is not, hey, can you do this for me? The first DM you ever sent was a nice thing. And it was probably them replying saying, thank you. So when you go and say, hey, can you help me with this? Or can you give me this tip? They immediately go, okay, yeah, sure. I'll help you out. They're more inclined to help you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that just happened with me with, uh, there's a really big guy on Twitter named Arvid Kahl. And uh, I had DM'd him. Been, on, I've been hit with him on, on this channel some yeah. weeks ago. Some weeks ago. I'll have you. Yeah, he's amazing. And and amazing. I amazing. I DM'd him a while ago, and I just was like, hey, thanks for all your amazing content. You're awesome. And he is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then he said thanks. So when I DM'd him this week, and I was like, hey, can you tell me what like email list newsletter manager software you're using? Because he's not using Review. He's not, it's not integrated into his Twitter. He was like, sure, this is what I'm using. These sorts of interactions built up over time and slowly and carefully are way more valuable than trying to game the system or, or, or any of that other stuff that other people tell you. Just having genuine interactions up front and then later on. Also, I want to say this. I usually will DM people, if their DMs are open, I'll DM them something really nice immediately because especially if they're growing, their DMs are going to be closed at some point. <laughs> And the only way you can DM them after they close their DMs is if you already have a DM open with them. So yes, use compliments and be nice. And, and that's a really good way for, to get started. For, for now, they are still open. I, I don't know for how much longer I can last. <laughs> I'm starting to lose the track. By the way, there is Micah who doesn't uh, uh, agree with you because she, she thinks that the best DM is this one. What do you think about Hi. this? I agree that <laughs> the, the worst part is I actually reply to these stupid high DMs because I feel bad for people. So I just go high and then they don't say anything. So <laughs> don't, yeah, don't DM people high. Uh, yeah. Have something yeah. to say, please. <laughs> Let's see. I'm actually interested in a review. Thanks, Francesco, for sharing it with me. Yeah, I've tried to help just a little bit. Getting close to launching my newsletter. So, Shaquille, we are at a very hard point for me <laughs> because uh, don't 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 leave this live stream, please. Uh, don't don't unfollow me. But uh, I have uh, around 600 people subscribed to my newsletter, and. Uh, in, in a while, people are uh, spamming, sending maybe too many uh, newsletter. I never sent uh, a single newsletter, so I'm here. D don't leave. Don't leave this call. <laughs> I, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Where's the? But, uh, okay, so I committed. I, I'll try. I'll make one tomorrow. In, in any case, so please uh, help me. Yeah, before hitting <laughs> me, please uh, help me to to get started with newsletter. So, for example, can we talk about this because? Uh, this is something that I really need. I need this for for tomorrow. So I need this now. If you have some advice for newsletter, please uh, help me. So, okay. If you're in any way trying to get your audience off of Twitter or off of any social media platforms that you're on, you're going to want to use a, a email list. You don't necessarily have to, but it's an extremely powerful tool. The reason it's powerful is you use your email list to send people great content to send people any discount codes you can get, to send people any free copies of cool things you can get, just like people do on Twitter where they'll tweet, oh, I, I'm, I'm doing a giveaway because I reached X amount of followers. Here's a giveaway of Arvid Call's book. Here's a giveaway of Francesco's Docker guide or something, right? 
you do that through your email list and your followers will get used to clicking your links because they like your links. They'll get used to opening your emails because they like your emails. And then you say, by the way, guys, I just put out a book. Please check out my book. You put your book out, you put your link, they go to your link, they flood your link. The algorithm, wherever you are, whether it's on Amazon, Gumroad, anywhere, sees, oh my God, thousand people just went to this link all at once. It's going up the list, it's going up the rankings. You could do the same thing with your YouTube channel where you drive a thousand good clicks to your YouTube because we know it's not good to have bad clicks on YouTube. If someone normally watches a bunch of Taylor Swift videos and you're making a Docker video and they click on your video, it screws up the recommendeds for your video. It screws up what your video is recommended with. And they're not likely to watch the whole video. But if you can have a dedicated email list, you can get them to go anywhere. You can drive them to an Instagram post. You can drive them to, to literally anything and you separate yourself. You become the source of your audience. And now all the other social media platforms are relying on you to drive the traffic rather than the other way around now, which is you're relying on Twitter to drive the traffic to you. That's the value of the email list. Now I have to yell at okay. you. Okay. Because <laughs> I, okay, I, okay, let me add just something so you are even more uh, angry with me. I've also started to um, build a community of content creators. We are about 600 people. We have also giveaways, so I could also make a, say, put the giveaway link inside that newsletter. So I, my excuses are now are very, are very few, <laughs> and uh, I think this is this is the moment. I think. Yeah. I, Something... Listen, this is these. There's so many opportunities. Okay, so like you're friends with Arvid Call. Arvid Call has an amazing email list. Ask him to let you. Like he doesn't want to write emails forever. Ask him to let you. Just like you do a, a guest blog post, guest email lists. Uh, and write something awesome for his email list. And now his list is connected with you and they want to go subscribe to you. Then you can go have him write on your list. And that's a week that you don't have to write anything. And there's so much waste for you to grow together. And it's like, you're doing what Twitter does, right? That's what you do on Twitter already. But now it's yours and it's Arvid's. It's not Twitter's. It doesn't belong to anyone. And you can point it anywhere. I mean, you could eventually have your own website where you host your own ebook files and you just drive traffic there. So now nobody gets a cut. There's so much power and it's such a waste to not do it. And so I want to kind of talk about what you said though. You said that a lot of people spam people with their email lists. Here's the deal. Don't sign up to an email list that you don't want to be on one. And two, if someone signed up, they want your stuff. It's the same thing with freelancing. If like, I was just talking to Sam Sycamore, and he was talking about how his first client emailed him back after he cold emailed him. And the client said, yeah, I mean, this is great, but I don't really think I need a website. And Sam said, if I had not been in my salesman mind, I would have said, okay, bye. But he realized that this guy was emailing him back for a reason. The guy wanted to be convinced. He was giving Sam an opportunity. If he didn't want to be convinced, he wouldn't have emailed him. I don't answer back to people that, like there's people emailing me now that want me to sign up for their services. I don't wanna be convinced, I'm not signing up, I'm not answering. Like I might even block their email, I'm done, right? But, if he, but he answered back, if someone subscribes to your email list, they want Francesco emails every week, please and thank you. I gave you my precious email, please. So never think if you're running an email list that people don't want to see your emails set the expectations up front if it's every day which i'm subscribed to some everyday emails then do it every day if it's once a week if it's once a month whatever but make sure you send content because they want it that's why they signed up yeah i uh, totally agree with you shaquille and i think that uh, when i will make this uh, newsletter i also inc include uh, of course this interview <laughs> with you because uh I think the, what you said, uh, it's right, that uh, if people are subscribed, there, there is a reason. And so and then you can engage with them in a different different way, which, which is not just Twitter, of course. Uh, I have a Twitter <laughs> logo behind me, and my, my, my social media for now is Twitter, but still, uh, of course, there is life outside of Twitter. Mm -hmm. Did you move uh, to review? So I, 
I did not. So there's two things that are missing from review. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. I, before I did uh, coding, I was really into being an author and I wanted to make money selling books. And authors make money selling books with their email list. That's their main income source because they drive traffic to their Amazon link. Amazon will push it up the rankings and boom, you're golden, right? So I know a lot of th different things about email lists. So when I look at review, I'm like, this is very basic and it's tied to Twitter because Twitter owns it. So it's, it's not that fun. Like what happens if my Twitter account gets banned? Does my review account get banned? I don't want to lose my newsletter. Even if I can export it, I'm not interested in suddenly being locked out. So that's one. I'm not interested in something that Twitter owns. Two, um, it doesn't allow you to tag people as they subscribe to your list. So I have an email list link for Twitter, but I might also have one for Instagram. And if someone subscribes through Instagram, I want to tag that subscriber as they came from Instagram, because that gives me an idea of what kind of content they're interested in. And if they're not engaging, if they're not clicking on my emails, I'm like, oh, hmm, the Instagram people are not clicking my emails. I must be missing something. Maybe if I add more images and I can segment them, I can be like, OK, I'm sending this email with no images to my Twitter subscribers, that email to my Instagram subscribers. Oh, I'm doing a free giveaway sign up for my email list to get this free book by Francesco, right? I tweet that out. I want to tag those people as free giveaway subscribers because they're not there for me necessarily. They probably just signed up for the free book. So I want to keep an eye on them. And if they're not opening my book, my emails up, I want to do the other thing that's important, which is get them off my email list. You can kick people off your email list to bring up your open rates and to, to bring up your click rates so that you don't get sent to spam as much. These are all very important things that review does not allow you to do. do you, I also want to eventually have an onboarding process where someone subscribes, they get an email, then a couple of days later, they might get another email and I'm building them up into my email list so that they can get used to engaging with me and they're getting good content immediately. That's relevant to them immediately. My current email list, I'm promising to teach people to land their first freelance client. I want the first email they get when they sign up, no matter when they sign up, to be a guide that's like, here's the first four steps to getting ready to freelance. I can't do that with Revue necessarily. It's it, You kind of can with Revue, but it, it, it kind of sucks. But with MailChimp, which I use, I can set up a thing that every time someone subscribes and they confirm, boom, they get this email. It's a it's a cool little infographic. It's a explanation of what's going on. It's an explanation of the concept of the list. And they get that automatically. And I don't ever have to worry about that. So those are things to think about with review. Those might be deeper, more complicated things. But that's why, for example, Arvid Call uses ConvertKit because ConvertKit is like the king in that space. And if those are things that are not important to you, you should use review. Yeah, for example, I have um, I use uh, MailerLite, which is another one. I've also a pro version, but I still not sent an email. <laughs> okay, I'll be hit. Uh, I'm, I'm now. I'm happy that we are not in the same room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I haven't yet checked. I can export our subscriber list out of review. You can. Sending human, you, you can. So you can. you can also do the opposite. You can import, but also, you, for example, this could be an idea. Since I have this Miller Lite uh, uh, Pro account, I could also um, do the opposite because I've imported my list uh, from um, from my Miller Lite uh, to review. But maybe I can also do the opposite. So yeah. let's see in the future. Let's see. Okay. How do you manage freelance work and Twitter interactivity time management? This is. Uh, one of the questions that I get uh, more often, I think this is the questions more asked in my interviews and also worldwide on, or on Twitter. Mm. So. Um, you kind of don't at first. <laughs> like when I, there was like people saying when I reached, I like shot up to 3000 followers and I completely stopped growing. And people were like, oh man, what happened? Like you kind of stopped growing. And I was like, I haven't been tweeting because I've I got clients finally. I'm working. Like I, I just I, don't have I love time. This. I love I love this, Jacqueline, because also, for example, when when I stop uh, when I stop being on Twitter, maybe because I'm editing a video, working hard, uh, working out, because I like to exercise also a lot. Uh, people say, "Oh, maybe you have been too many here." Ah, do you feel good? <laughs> uh, maybe sometimes it's the opposite. But maybe when you have less time, maybe you stay less on social media. But uh, I think that from my point of view, is that this real secret is that you should be on Twitter, uh, tweeting about what you do. 
you don't just tweet uh, you you don't do freelancing to to tweet about that that would be crazy <laughs> so right. it's kind of the opposite uh, right. you tweet about what you do if you run you make run guesting me at least uh, yeah Maybe. i do i do want to say real quick to that guy mm -hmm. um to manage both there's two options you can do with uh, what oliver jumpers does which every sunday he will set around four hours out and he will write all of his tweets for the week and he will schedule them for throughout the week using a service like feed hive or you can decide that you're going to try to make content that's more personal and more your shooting from the hip like kind of the way i tweet way less technical and so that it requires less investment so it's just like okay once once or twice a day i'm going to jump on i'm just going to tweet something i'm thinking about that's it i tend to write down tweet ideas when they happen so that later if i don't have any ideas for the day i can go hit that list but that's the best i can say other than set aside two to three hours a day yeah. and tweet and yeah and i think that if yeah you need to choose between working and just tweeting out of the void maybe it's better to focus on work because of course yes. every, everything is related to that uh, it's not a problem if you disappear from twitter for a month it happened to a lot of my friends uh, also have been for example inactive for some weeks sometimes so maybe it's important maybe to give the, the good priorities because uh, of course uh, the real problem of social media is that sometimes they get they become addictive so you think that you need to be there otherwise you are no one that's not true of course this is just a part of our lives it's important to use the social media and never the opposite <laughs> so be the social media that are using you it's always the as you said i like what you say that we don't uh, you can for example also focus on other social media and other stuff so yeah that's it perfect okay so um, uh, what about yeah so what about uh, uh, content creation for example because now i'm creating this um, community of, of content creators so it has been uh, a very crazy week so basically these last four months for me i want to fix uh, what I didn't like about what I did uh, during this year. So uh, from other points of view, uh, they have been great, the job, uh, the stuff. Uh, but for example, I want to start to fix the newsletter for first uh, and also creating this community. This is something that idea that I had like on, on last December. <coughs> now so I want to work on this. So what uh, what's your point of view about that? Uh, about uh, creating different type of type of contents. So uh, yeah, let's say for for example, also for, for the freelancing on that seat. What's your point of view, your personal point of view? My personal point of view is um, when it comes to content creation and you want to think about creating content, um, you need to recognize that it's going to take more time than you think it's going to take. And just like when you're, you're scheduling out a freelance project and it's like, oh, I could get this done in a month, ask for two months because you don't know what's going to happen. With content, if you think it's going to take a month, expect to spend two and then plan for three because it's a lot of time you cannot write a blog post and put it out there it's going to be trash you can't edit it that day you have to edit it tomorrow that's it you cannot you and and you cannot write a script for a video and edit it the same day it's not possible it's scientifically impossible you have to do it tomorrow at the earliest so expect that a thing that's going to take you a day actually takes two expect the editing process to be 60 to 70 percent of the actual work of creating the thing i have written books i can tell you that writing the book was the easy part editing the book was the real work and if you're not a good editor you're not a good content creator whether you're an artist i mean watch bob ross's paintings whether you're a, a video editor whether you're a blogger so just understand that it's going to take a meaningful amount of time and try not to commit yourself to making too many different types of content at once. I want to make YouTube, but I can't because I, and I want to blog. Right. I can't, I'm just like, I'm going to do my right. email list right now. I'm going to get that down and maybe I'll blog. I'd love to blog. And then maybe I'll do YouTube, but I won't do both. I won't do YouTube and blog. Limit yourself. I, I, yeah, Shakil, I really love your approach because I think that one of the main problems is that we want to do too many things. This was also me 10 years ago. Instead of every time, for example, that I've decided to don't to not do something, best days of my life. So like maybe I'll turn this down for some, some time because basically you are working on priorities. This doesn't mean that you can't be successful. I have had here, as I said, more than 100 people 
you can reach success in different ways. So I totally agree with you. We don't need to be uh, content creators full time. It, it must to have sense. So I agree with you and your point of view. It's uh, maybe a different point of view, but uh, so thank you for sharing this with us because uh, you're really the living proof that you don't need to make one video per day to, to, to get a job. It, it's uh, different things. It can, of course, this would, would help. There are people who have done this. I've done 100 videos in 100 days, interviews, mm -hmm. because I had some time to dedicate to that. I've decided in my head to focus on this for a period of time. And now we are here talking. So this has been, has been good for me. Yeah. This doesn't mean that everybody should, uh, should do, do exactly the same thing. So thank you for sharing your point of view. This has been really original and I really loved that. So um, what's your pricing strategy knowing that prices sometimes change according to client's location? Hmm. Um, hmm. Nice. I feel like, so that's, I feel like someone, as someone from the US, I, I might not be as uh, capable to speak on this because it's a very privileged position to be in the United States. Um, so I don't necessarily have to think about that, to be honest. Um, but I think at the end of the day, your pricing strategy when you first start should be uh, the most that you can get without scaring them away because <laughs> you just need anybody when you're starting. It just is what it is. Uh, most of your favorite freelancers who tell you to charge more, the first two, three projects they did were free. So mm -hmm. like, I, it is what it is. Like, um, But if you're already ready and rolling, um, you should be looking for clients while you have work that way you can price what you're comfortable with. And if someone can't reach your price, that's it. You just can't work with them. Yeah. Don't don't bring yourself down. Uh, yeah, uh, usually I say that we, we can't just uh, fix the economy, just uh, lowering our prices. It's not our fault. Uh, but if there are, uh, th there should not be those differences in the world, but uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, this should not be, but uh, yeah. So I totally agree with you. Of course, you should never, uh, yeah, uh, underprice yourself uh, because of the worldwide uh, politics. Well, I, I want to say this, though. I want to yeah, say yeah. this on that. I had a client who works in New York, and they wanted me to build a website. And I charged, I, I said $3,000 because it was a, a WordPress website. And they got upset because I didn't ask enough because they're from New York. So they were like, are you what? They're expecting me to ask ten thousand dollars because they're in New York City and that's the prices. That's like how Word, WordPress sites for New York it starts at ten thousand. That's it. Don't even knock on my door if you don't have ten thousand dollars. So when I'm saying three thousand, they're like, "Does this guy know what he's doing?" So uh, mm. the you do you can do well by just researching in that area. And I mean, like I said, send some nice DMs to people. Send a nice DM to Eden Benatar on Twitter. And then when it's time to ask that question. Hit them up when I when I got a client that came to me to do a SDK, a uh, JavaScript SDK. Um, I DM'd Brad Traversy because I had already set up a rapport with him, and he gave me some great advice. And that's that's going to be a lot of help to you talking to people who've already been through that. Perfect, perfect. One day I'll have a Traversy media on this channel. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying hard, I'm trying harder than you can think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have just five uh, five minutes left. So if you want to drop a question, please uh, drop in this in the chat. Let's go, uh, Kush. Hey there. Uh, it was a great interview. Thank you. Uh, have a great time. Bye for now. We'll have to go. Perfect. Let's see. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, uh, Francesca and guys. Uh, uh, thank you, Ken, for all this, uh, this question. You are making my life easier as a host. <laughs> what are your biggest challenges as a freelance software developer? Oh, my biggest challenges right now are dealing with all the opportunities that I have right now. Like, legitimately, like, there's so much work out there and there's so many different people who want me that I'm literally just spacing everyone apart and saying, I'll get back to you next week. I'll get back to you next week because I want to see what opportunities come up with. And so really, I would say as an extension of that, the biggest challenge right now as a freelance software developer is making sure that I am available and I don't lock myself in to long-term time-consuming contracts. Um, exactly. 
that's yeah, my big basically, problem. Basically, Shaquille, like, you, you, yeah, you just uh, stole my, my line because I, I wanted to say <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, to be honest, w when I quit my job, I said, okay, maybe I'm ready to be unemployed for one year, six months, because I started, let's say, from zero, okay, with an online presence, but yeah, the not still not like uh, something uh, uh, already seen. I thought that maybe one day I would have done, had some uh, offers. He said the day after, uh, I started to work at Feed Hive. So, for example, a couple of months I worked also on their weekend. So now I have the same problem. I have too many uh, opportunities, uh, so, so I need uh, to choose between uh, which opportunities, which maybe could sound uh, bad, uh, but uh, that's the truth. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you can understand me. You mm -hmm. need to, maybe to choose the, the right clients uh, who you like more. It's not, it's not just about the money or five more dollars. It's more about maybe if you like the, their ideas, uh, their mindset, uh, what are they promoting, what they are working on. So. It's not only about that. So yeah, totally agree. <laughs> That's the problem. I mean, maybe we should hire someone or maybe create a team. I don't know. <laughs> at, some point, at some point, I think I'll do like a Francesco company in some sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so Shakil, uh, usually at the end of these interviews, uh, I leave the opportunity to leave. Uh, to, yeah, let's try. Let me, yeah, let's let, let's do this last question just for, just for you, Ken, and then we will close this. Uh, what's your freelance preference? Hourly price or fixed price and why? Um, no preference. It, it depends the project. Uh, if I am coming in to do a project that has a fairly set uh, amount of work and I'm in charge of it, then I want fixed price. If I'm not in charge of it, I probably want to charge hourly. But what's important is to make sure that each of those choices are optimized. I do hourly, but they get, they can't track my hours and I don't track my hours. You don't get to know my hours. I told you I'm doing the eight hours and I'm doing the work, pay me, that's it. And if I don't do eight, I'll tell them. I'll be like, oh, I did six today, I did three today. Mm -hmm. um, but don't ever let them track you directly or anything like that. Um, that. That's the real downside of hourly. And for fixed price, you know, uh, you can get some real good money uh, fixed price if you're an expert and it's a very uh, contained thing. So I would say for a website, for a WordPress site, do fixed price. For uh, I'm, you know, working on the back end for some software, some SaaS, probably hourly. Hmm. Nice. This is great for them. For example, for me, I've worked on both of them, uh, maybe mostly hourly. I can say that maybe the more I like a company, maybe the more for me it's better to work hourly, maybe to have, uh, yeah. So for me, it's like that. Uh, the more I like a company, so I would like collaborate with them maybe for a longer period, I go for hourly price. Maybe, and I, I like what you said about the fixed price, for example, for a website. Uh, so at least you have an idea. Of course, they have pro and cons because if you do fixed, then you have, to find maybe a fixed one maybe it's good uh, for example if you want to outsource i think yeah i don't know if this is for example you can make someone do some parts of course i don't know not just everything or everything i don't know very last question then we'll close uh how to deal with imposter syndrome especially dealing with the first client have you ever had this problem yeah um you have to just work through it there's there's no answer it's it's sort of like saying how do i how do I go to the gym every day? You just have to do it. Um, you, I, I, maybe you could remind yourself of certain things. Like for example, these people don't even know half the words that you're saying. Like the minute, the minute you say HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they're like, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. You already sound like an expert to, you, to them. Yeah. So remind yourself that you are an expert in stuff that they don't understand. And two, remind yourself that like, your job as a starting freelancer is not to be an expert. Your job is to be good at figuring out answers to the problems. Your job isn't to know how to build a perfect web WordPress website. Your job is to know how to figure it out and get it done in time. That's what you're focused on. Absolutely. I love that. So, Shagil, would you like to add something before we close? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Finally, we know a little bit more each other. I'm super happy, finally. So can we give maybe a final message, uh, for example, especially to people maybe that they have uh, really problems with just the, with the first client. So we can connect with this, uh, the last thing that we said. So what what can they do? Uh, 
which is, for example, yeah, I think that you think that that can really help them. If you're if you're tr having issues trying to connect to the first client, make sure that your social media presence you have it represented what you're good at. Make sure you're engaging with people like Francesco or Eden or whoever people who are already freelancing and have uh, agencies, and make sure you let them know, hey, I'm available for work. If you're really really struggling to find clients, client sources are more important, and those guys are client sources. And the last thing I'll say is this. If you want to kind of get a guide on, on on how to find clients from multiple different sources and multiple different opinions, whether it's WordPress, Shopify, front end, back end, full stack developer, whatever you're focusing on, uh, I just started an email list today. Uh, the concept of the email list is that I'm writing a book called "Landing Your the De Definitive Guide to Landing Your First Freelance Client." But mm -hmm. instead of you waiting for the book, and this was the idea I wanted to tell you about, Francesco with your email list, instead of you waiting for the book, if you subscribe to my email list, every week you'll get a chapter of the book until the book comes out and you get it for free. So all you have to do is subscribe. And then when the book comes out, you can buy it at a discount. You'll be the first ones to know. And uh, the concept of the book is I'm interviewing different freelancers, getting their experiences. I'd like to interview Francesco and getting their experiences of how they landed their first uh, freelance clients. I've got guys who've done it cold emails. I've got guys who were just tweeting and not freelancing at all. And then someone contacted them. So definitely check that out. Go to my Twitter account at Shaquille Hansford and uh, subscribe. It's in my bio and it's the top tweet I just sent out. Uh, perfect, Shaquille. You keep stealing my, my lines, but uh, okay. So <laughs> follow Shaquille, please. Uh, I leave the links, uh, the links below. And uh, you're is really a nice guy. Thank you for uh, all the advice. I think uh, one of the things that I really like about you is that you have had a really practical approach. So we're really talking about uh, something concrete. So I think this is one of the let's call this a secret. I don't know if that's a secret. I think the the secret is really the hard work. And that's it. So there's a lot of people. If you want to say hi on buy, this is the moment. Uh, thank you, Ken. You have been uh, you have been really great uh, with a lot of questions, and this is this is why we are doing this kind of live stream. So thank you so much. I hope that we, we gave uh, the all the answers. Sick idea, perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, something serious that exists for nobody newspaper. Perfect, Shaquille. We made it. Um, thank you also because we have rescheduled this a couple of days because I was a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> but he said that he is uh, his superpower <laughs> to be a little bit flexible as long as he can, of course. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep fighting the Twitter algorithm because uh, he doesn't like uh, <laughs> we <laughs> differ. So, so now I'll turn on notifications. So at least now I, I'll check your profile. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks, man. It was, it was great being here. Thanks for having me. Perfect, perfect. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.